Command & Conquer was released in 1995 and is by far the best retro strategy game or RTS game. Now, the first one, which was retroactively called um, Tiberian Dawn, has been ported to so many different platforms. It started off on the PC, it was then later released on the PlayStation 1 and the Sega Saturn, and then finally got a complete overhaul remake on Nintendo 64, which has a completely different graphics engine. It's all in 3D, it's very cool. And the game had one of the greatest remasters I've ever seen for a game uh, in like 2020 I think it was when it came out during the pandemic of the first sort of two games of the series being uh, Command & Conquer and then Red Alert 1 which I'll talk about in a bit. The footage that you're seeing at the moment is just clips from me playing the remastered version because it just adds a little bit more quality of life thing and you can do that really cool Halo uh, anniversary switch between the graphics with the space bar which is just something I tend to do all the time just for fun. But honestly this game is absolutely phenomenal. It first was released uh, or published developed by uh, Westwood Studios, who were then bought by EA and later closed down, become um, what was it like EA Los Angeles, I think it was. And they are responsible for the games uh, like the Dune 2 that came out on Mega Drive and also the, I think it was PC as well, which is a very similar game. There's a lot of like tropes in this strategy series that are straight out of the Dune games because, especially in like the European countries or PAL region. It was Virgin Interactive that sort of uh, published this game. Um, even though Westwood was still heavily involved, I still seem to remember Westwood being the PC port. Maybe I had like a, an American PC copy, I can't really remember. But I definitely remember seeing Virgin Interactive on a few of the other sort of uh, the PC, ver or play PlayStation 1 version and such. And honestly, this is one of the best real-time strategy games or old-school real-time strategy games that you can ever have. It's so so like easy to play which is one of the best things about a strategy game it's one of them games that has very easy controls but is very hard to master and the controls are so easy because they are literally just uh, one button you can play this entire game with just a mouse just a mouse and a, and a button you need one button to play this whole game and that is it, you can control everything. And that's probably why it's been ported to so many platforms because it's just, the controls are just so simple. Now, the series in general went on to have like an absolutely like beloved franchise. I don't think there is a single bad Command & Conquer game. Even Command & Conquer 4, I still quite like, but it was a very big departure from the rest of the series. I still think it's a good game. It's just not a good Command & Conquer game. But from Command & Conquer, I can't really think of many other franchises that really do this. Uh, you kind of have like two different timelines or two different series of Command & Conquer. I guess it's a tiny bit like what Call of Duty did. But you had like the Tiberian Saga, which was um, sort of like futuristic. It was sort of originally set in 2020, which is quite funny. And then went on to be way more futuristic, set like hundreds and thousands of years in the future. And you had the Red Alert series, which was an alternative timeline history history of World War II where the Germans never were there and it was just the Soviets versus the Allies and there's all this crazy technology like Tesla like Tesla troopers, chronospheres, loads of really cool wacky science and the series is absolutely like famous for its um, sort of real life cutscenes in Command & Conquer 3, Tim Curry of all people plays Premier in it, it's incredible, personally my favourite acting comes from Red Alert 2 which is my favourite game of all time like for PC, is my favourite strategy game of all time is Red Alert 2 is just incredible I've played it so much and that game has the cheese of a Starship Troopers film but it's still amazing and this is kind of what like the Red Alert game looks like this is still the remastered version but it, you can see it's kind of just more troops more like color I guess because different terrain we never really had the snow terrains all in 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 the last game you also get the use of naval troops rather than them just being like a, a thing that sits in the sea and fires indiscriminately that you can't control you can actually now move around a navy which is really fun but the series has just sort of dropped off and just disappeared over time which is real sad because it is a fantastic series it has its die-hard fans and then it has people that have never ever heard of the game and have no idea what it's about just to sort of redact what i said earlier when i said every single game in the series is somewhat good 
that's not true. The most a recent official entry into the Commander Conquer series was a mobile game and it's terrible. I'd also like to add as well there is actually a third timeline which is Command & Conquer Generals which takes place in a more sort of modern warfare area where it's just real cities, well real cities, real countries all fighting it out. That came out in like early 2000s heavily influenced by the Iraq war and it's really good it's like America, China and I think it's called the GLA all just fighting it out over like the Middle East and yeah it was really good the Zero Hour expansion pack incredible and i think all of the games have an expansion pack which is even better because you just get more stuff they they don't really change the formula you just get more of what is already good so you know pick up the expansion packs the expansion packs genuinely add so much more to the games like uh, such games like firestorm really good that goes with tiberian sun which is the third game in the series sequel to the first game you kind of like flips between the two they go alternating on the timelines and then my personal favorite is yuri's revenge had a whole new faction come in and they were like crazy psychic monsters it was really interesting time travel gets involved at one point which is like I wish that was I could say that was the weirdest thing that happens but you do end up fighting dinosaurs which is pretty cool and I just feel like there aren't many retro series or just like RTS games that take itself like don't take itself seriously anymore like I can't think of a single like strategy game series where you can be playing as the Soviet Union and then teleport back in time to fight dinosaurs to then sort of go to the moon the only place where capitalism cannot touch you it's like a it's like a fever dream they literally just do not make games like they used to and i would honestly recommend this series to anyone it, like i said earlier if you've never played the series there's a great remaster of the first two games with all its dlc you can pick it up on steam for quite cheap i'm pretty sure it's quite cheap i pre-ordered it so i don't know but from there you can go on to play so many other fantastic games in the series unfortunately it is with EA so if you wanted to get like the collection you have to go through EA Origin and it's an absolute nightmare to try and get it run on your computer now because they're all sort of like Windows XP era games and trying to get it to run you have to put it into compatibility mode and then it just sort of messes up your computer a little bit there's certain things that don't work anymore I don't know whether that's just my computer or whether that's just the general theme of games but yeah so that's just me rambling for a little bit about my favourite RTS series and the best RTS series in my opinion is the Command & Conquer series. I just think they're fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.